Hi everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to our CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Tournament. I'm joined as always by Clark Kellogg. In the first half of the day today, we saw two number 12 teams prevail. We expect more of the same tonight? The only lower seed that prevails tonight, Western Kentucky. That's it? That's it. All right. You know I hold you to it, too. Coming up <laughs> in just a few moments, down in Greenville, South Carolina, Charlotte will take on Chris Thomas and Notre Dame. Meanwhile, out in Albuquerque, number 11 Wyoming is about to battle number 6 Gonzaga and sharpshooting Dan Dickow. Shortly following those two tips, Holy Cross will have first crack at Kansas, the top seed in the Midwest, and North Carolina Wilmington will challenge Southern Cal, the fourth seed in the South. Then at about 10 p.m. Eastern, four more games come your way. Among the schools in action, defending national champion Duke, the top seed in the South, Arizona seated third in the West, and another 8-9 game, Western Kentucky against Stanford. Eight first-round games have already been contested today. Let's catch you up on some of it. Montana, Oregon in Sacramento. Luke Ridenour, three-point from the top of the key, 18 points, four steals, three assists on the day. Oregon goes inside to Christopherson. It's blocked, but Anthony Lever, right place, right time. Cash money from behind the three-point. Line. Meanwhile, Missouri against Miami in Albuquerque. Missouri's Clarence Gilbert to Kareem Rush. Feeds Arthur Johnson for the dunk. And Gilbert going to drop another dime, this time to Ricky Paulding. Open for the three. Missouri proved in impressive fashion. Tulsa against Marquette in St. Louis. Greg Harrington driving the lane with the game tied at 69, running one-hander, two of his 12 points. Marquette elects not to call a timeout, looking for the last second shot to tie it or win it. Doesn't go and Tulsa moves on. Kent State, Oklahoma State in Greenville. Trevor Huffman drives and dishes to Antonio Gates. Then Huffman wide open from behind the three-point line. Kent State holds on. And then Demetric Shaw, three-pointer from the baseline, put the golden flashes up 55-48. They ended up winning. Let's take a look at all the winners in the first round. They include second seed Oregon, Ohio State a winner, Missouri beat Miami, and Wake Forest over Pepperdine. Also winners in the East, Marquette losing to Tulsa, and Kentucky beating Valparaiso. And we will continue along the road to the Final Four after this word from your local station. The first round of play in the 2002 NCAA tournament about to resume at four sites around the country. Some of you will start tonight's primetime doubleheader with Wyoming against Gonzaga. Most of you will begin with Charlotte against Notre Dame, including those of you expecting to see the Holy Cross Kansas matchup tipping at 750 Eastern and others who are anticipating the UNC Wilmington Southern California game. We will take you to that tip at 755 Eastern. Enjoy the games, everyone. March Madness 2002 continues here on CBS. CBA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda MPV, the United States Army, Budweiser, and by United Airlines. The pit in Albuquerque, New Mexico, site of the West Bracket, and we are ready for our night games here in the pit, the first of the evening. Later tonight, number one. Up next, so let's take a look at the starting lineups. 12 seed Utah. Lineups tonight for the 49ers, Curtis Nash, Cam Stevens, Jermaine Williams, Devon Brown, Joe. Is Steve McLean and the Zags are coached by Mark Few in his third season. Coach of the year in the. Here's a look at Bobby Lutz in his fourth year from Harrisburg, North Carolina. Third NCAA trip in the last four years. And Mike Gray in his second year, his second NCAA. And the officials, John Cal, Driscoll. And we are underway. Winston Stiff is the third official. Wyoming controlling the tip. Man to man defense by Gonzaga. And some nervousness on the part of the Cowboys as they turn it over. 
Gus Johnson joined by my partner Dan Bonner. And Dan, when you look at this basketball game, Gonzaga comes in with a little chip on their shoulder. Where they feel like they didn't get the seed they deserved as a number six seed. They're playing a very good Wyoming team. They've got a chance to prove whatever they want to prove. We get an opportunity to see one of the special players in our country, Dan Dickow, first team AP All-America. Zach Gord spinning, leaning off the glass, no, and Marcus Bailey comes up with the rebound. Wyoming does not shoot the ball well from the outside, only 30% from beyond the three-point arc, so look for Gonzaga in this man-to-man -man defense to drop off and try to help out against the inside guys. Inside, Josh Davis, the baseline spin, no. And Step comes up with the board. He brings it up the floor. Step looking. Now Gord lobs it down low, taken away by Davis. Now keep your eye on this young man, folks. Number three, his name is Jason Strait. He's a true freshman out of the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois. And he is lightning quick. Bailey pulls up from 15 and hits his first shot of the day. That's Bailey's game. Take the ball off the dribble, get it into that mid-range jump shot area. In his last two games, Bailey has scored a total of 60 points. Wyoming 21 and 8, 11 and 3 in their conference as Gonzaga gets on the board. Gord with the jump hook on the baseline. Everybody talks about Dan Dickow, but Gonzaga has some extremely talented guys playing on the inside. Very athletic, they shoot the ball well. Richardson pulls up and nails the three. Talking to the Wyoming players and coaching staff yesterday, they were so ready to take on this Gonzaga team. They're tired of hearing all the talk about the Zags and how good they are and about how they are Cinderella's, as they told us. A darling has to replace <laughs> a darling, and we're ready. We think we're going to do it. Now Bailey, guarded by step, crosses over and dribbles it right out of bounds. So Wyoming, how did they get here? Wyoming, of course, they got an at-large bid. They were the regular season champions in the Mountain West Conference, but they lost in the conference semifinals. Second straight year that they have been the regular season champs out in the Mountain West. Dickow pulling up from way downtown, and that's what makes him an All-America. Dan Dickow with unbelievable range and lift on that jump shot ties the game up at five. And if they come out and guard him there, Gus, he'll just keep backing up. Now straight down on the baseline, hits the teardrop. That's a Chicago move. Dickow again off the break this time. Off the front rim, here comes Bailey. Into the front court, and Dickow gets a hand on it. RPI schedule strength number 15 in the country. We'll change defenses, multiple defenses, multiple offensive sets. Bobby Lutz has opponents guessing. There's the freshman Thomas from Indianapolis, Indiana. And he gives Notre Dame a 6-3 lead. Stevens to Brown and Graves on him for the Irish. Loving it inside. What a catch and a jam by Stevens. Good back screen by Joby Thomas against his own defense on the defender down low. Freed that up. Ryan Humphrey, who began his college career in Oklahoma, switches to the Irish and has had a brilliant career. Powerful play. Averages a double-double, 19 points, nearly 11 rebounds a game. We want to remind some of our viewers that we will be leaving this game in a few minutes to see another game of special interest in their local area. You'll be kept up to date on this Notre Dame and Charlotte game as the night progresses. Matchup zone, you've got to find Thomas in a hurry. Graves draws the foul. That's his first for Notre Dame. Let's go back against the zone defense. You see Thomas down low with the screen over the top. Come on, Brown, right on the money with the pass. Notre Dame is one of the prettiest plays in basketball. Well, gets his own defense. Some teams run it and some don't, but successful. Must communicate, though, if you're a defensive team. Any screens that are set, must call them out. Good hands by Graves. Turnover by Charlotte. Here they go to Humphrey in the pass by Thomas. A little high. Chris Thomas. Mike Gray has given this young man freedom to be good and freedom to be bad on occasions. But he remains the heart and soul of the Irish. Yes, he does. And he has had a fabulous year. 
18 points, eight assists of all game. Big East Rookie of the Year. Former Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana, Thomas, who has faked out that time. Here's Nash on the baseline, handing to Jermaine Williams inside. We already mentioned Nash. It's 6 to 6 6 likes to put it on the floor. Can create off the dribble. Almost a point forward type of player. Carroll to Thomas. Joby Thomas defending. Up three again on that block. Leans into Good Williams. Defense. Outside to Carroll for three. Wow. So Notre Dame began 0 of 3. They have gone 4 of 4 since. Carroll has knocked down two three point shots. Man to man defensively, Carroll the matchup against Thomas. Thomas likes to come off screens and does not need much room to shoot it. And Joby Thomas for three at the other end. And plucked out of the air by Curtis Nash. And he gets a new shot clock for the 49ers. And puts up a three in the process. And it ricochets out of bounds. It'll be Notre Dame's ball when we come back. Irish on top by 11 to 7 over Charlotte. Greg Gumbel in New York. We'll keep you updated on what happens between the Fighting Irish and the 49ers. But those of you awaiting the tip in St. Louis, first round action in the Midwest. The Crusaders of Holy Cross against the top-seeded Kansas Jayhawks will take you now to St. Louis and join Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas. And thank you, Greg Gumbel. The Holy Cross Crusaders has the 16th seed, trying to do something no 16th seed has ever done, and that's win an opening round game. And it's a tough task against the top scoring team in the nation, the Kansas Jayhawks. There you see the bracket in the Midwest. The winner of this to meet Stanford Western Kentucky. Victor, and we'll have that game for you later this evening. Well, it's been frustrating for Kansas. They've had great teams, number one seeds in the 90s, but unable to move past the Sweet 16. It's been, well, in the words of Roy Williams a couple of years ago, devastating, frustrating not to go on. He's very hungry to win a national championship. Kansas fans think this could be the year. You know, Dick, never has a number one seed had to answer the question so much about all their past problems over the last 14 years. Nevertheless, they've led by three outstanding juniors. Drew Gooden, one of the best offensive rebounders in three-pointer. He's a sophomore from Boise. And he's a guy who needs to be a little bit more involved in this game. That's the first time he's touched the ball on the offensive end of the court. And Zaga gets back into a zone. Davis strong to the basket. Oh! And one. Hanging in the air. And somehow with the strength to get it up and off the glass and in. Knocked down three three point shots, a four point lead. Let's send it over to Spencer Tillman. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Bobby Lutz's star guard, Joby Thomas, woke up about 1 a.m. today complaining that he couldn't hold down his food. Now, they immediately, as a preemptive measure, put him on intravenous fluids. Of course, he's going to expend a lot of liquids today to be sure. And we'll keep an eye on him for you. Now, I'm curious, John, as a shooter, how will that impact his shot, if at all, if he has weak legs? Spencer, as a shooter, it doesn't affect you as much as it does playing defense. We'll see if they play more zone defense with Thomas out front and not using his energy. As a shooter, you're calm. You don't feel well, but you shoot it well. Legs don't affect this guy because it's all in his arm and his release. His hand. With offensive rebound by Swanigan, we want to remind some of our viewers that they will be leaving us in a few moments to see another game of special interest in your local area. We kept up to date on this game as Humphrey misses from outside. Just under 15 minutes to play in the first half. Notre Dame shooting 44%, Charlotte shooting 37%. Devon Brown. Rebounding even at five. Thomas wiggling inside. What a rejection by Humphrey. Yeah, Bobby Lutz wanted goaltending. I'm not sure that shot would have made it to the rim. Good weak side help. Move down the lane and close. Quick inbound to Thomas, and they work it now to DeMond Brown, who is defended by Chris Thomas. Rebound by Jermaine Williams and a thicket of Irish players. Rebound by Carroll of Notre Dame. Charlotte finding a tough way to get shots off. 
Tried the pick and roll with Thomas and Humphrey. Now Humphrey ends up with it as he finds his way inside. Rebound by Jermaine Williams, who has been all over the court. His third rebound. And Williams doing a solid job defensively staying down on the floor when Ryan Humphrey ball fits. Butter Johnson is in for the first time for Charlotte. Nash. Good fake by Brown. Slithering inside. Williams knocked away by Humphrey and a foul on Notre Dame. Notre Dame, a well-coached defensive team. Help, recover, switch men, communicate. Penetration by Brown. Williams tries to finish the hack. Good foul. Do not allow an easy two. Ryan up for Notre Dame picks up his first personal foul. Jermaine Williams at the free throw line. A guy who John has been battling quite the severity of a stress fracture but in the family and it has caused him some problems since the early part of February. You know a guy that will give Bobby Lutz about 20 minutes of ball game. And they need his presence tonight because of the play of Ryan Humphrey. He's going to have to do it on the defensive end. Greg Gumbel in New York. Clark Kellogg and I will keep you updated on what happens between Notre Dame and Charlotte. But right now those of you awaiting the tip off in Arco Arena in Sacramento of UNC Wilmington in Southern California. Let's send you there now and join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarkel. Greg, thank you. USC had a magical run last season getting to the Elite Eight. They will try to duplicate that and even top it. It starts here today in Sacramento as they take on the 13th seed in the South, North Carolina Wilmington. Take a look at the brackets in that South region and action a little bit later on. Indiana against Utah and also from Greenville, Duke Winthrop, Notre Dame, Charlotte as well. on defense the freshman Zatko moving into the lane rebound Collison that's three rebounds already for Nick Collison Gooden twisting three and gives Kansas a 6-4 advantage leading rebounder leading score in the Big 12 out of the Oakland area Richmond California Drew Gooden. Down goes Lufkin, and there's the steal by Miles. And he is fouled. Jave Mead couldn't stop him. Uh, take a look at uh, Drew Gooden off the ball. Nobody guarding him here. You would think you'd find one of the top players in the country and at least get a hand on him. And then there he is again, just breaking free as he has. A couple of the Holy Cross Crusaders in a bit of a spin cycle there trying to locate him, but he's just so quick and so active around the hoop. Aaron Miles, the freshman point guard from Portland, Oregon, the three point play. It's a 7 0 run now for Kansas to lead 9 to 4. Sarah Valley free for the three. And Miles can't handle it. Wilson. Zatko and Gooden rebounds at 6-10. He brings it up court. Stops and throws it away. Heinrich was open for the three in the corner. Uh, you're not going to see too many players in college basketball to do what Drew Gooden just did. Snap that rebound all, keep it high underneath the basket and turn and then push himself. Head up all the way, ready to make whatever play is called for. And he'll get some votes for the Wooden Award as the National Player of the Year. He and Jason Williams considered the two favorites. Sarah Valley inside, unable to score as he hits the deck. And here comes Miles for Kansas. Patrick Wortley. In the game for the first time, easily spotted with those elbow pads as Boshi hits his first shot. Jeff Boshi makes it 11 to 4. That's nine unanswered points by Kansas. For one of the rare times that uh, Kansas had an unbalanced floor, usually they have it balanced beautifully, but Boshi, just with his individual talent, and keep in mind he's playing on a very sore ankle, just makes a one on one play. Aaron Miles with a file. We have a timeout, 15 43, remaining in the opening half. Rebounded by Burnett. Not a bad job blocking out to start things off defensive for the Seahawks. Callahan will short. Rebound flat. Chopped down by Burnett. 
They'll restart it. Blizzard gets his first touch. They won't take the clock out of the game totally, but they'll be patient enough to make sure they get good luck at the offensive end. Callahan lob upstairs and out of bounds. He was looking inside for Terrell. Tournament profile, Los Angeles, not very far from Sacramento, 359 miles, about a five, five and a half hour ride, so they should have good support here. Intercepted off that feed, Tim Burnett gets it ahead. The drive by Williams, yeah. and banked it through, plus a foul. That was deflected, it would have been a goaltending call, I believe, anyway, but gets it to go down. The Seahawks looking to push the basketball, and spotty. And here they come with the defensive effort. Burnett going down the floor, passes it up ahead to Williams, and he finishes somehow and gets it to drop. And the foul called on Sam Clancy, the Pac-10 Player of the Year. Williams completes the three-point play, a 61% free throw shooter, a senior from Irving, Texas. They've done a lot of recruiting in that Texas area, and it's worked out for them. 3-0, Seahawks. Yeah, they just have to try to control some tempo and just take it out. Three, back door. Play it in. And it's rebounded by Callahan. Here's Burnett in a hurry, met by Granville. Callahan breaks free. Granville actually got away with a strip on the arm on the initial drive, but things working out okay so far for UNC Wilmington. Craven trying to force the action. Loses the basketball. It's picked up by Clancy, a jumper. Looking for his... Looked like David Bluthenthal got loose on the weak side glass to give Southern Cal their first bucket. I think he's really a key for USC's success chances. David Bluthenthal had a terrific tournament last year, has been up and down this year, but he's a guy that rebounds, he can shoot the three, and he's got to play well for USC to advance. Both these teams are 22 and nine, Clark. Could be the similarities in there. I think so. USC lost four games on last, last second possession. They're athletic, they're quick, they turn people over, and they're terrific on both backboards. If UNC Wilmington is gonna win this game, what is it they have to do? Well, they've got to make the three-point shot. They've got to control the pace of the game, and they can't allow the pressure defense of USC to force turnovers where they can't get their defense set. And there's a turnover right there. The pressure by USC forcing a traveling violation, and the ball will go the other way. We have seen not just this season, but last as well, the athleticism that USC presents. They don't have any really, really big guys, but they have guys between 6'5 and 6'8 that play much taller than that because of their long arms and tremendous jumping ability. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in the Midwest, in St. Louis, just coming out of a timeout, Holy Cross and top seed Kansas, and Kansas in the lead by a score of 11 to 4, and even at this this early stage of the game, the physical nature of the Jayhawk game has shown itself. Well, they're one of the most complete teams in the tournament, I think, when you talk about Kansas. Size, speed, good ball skills, and they play at a fast pace, and they don't typically make a lot of mistakes, even though they play very fast. Kansas has enjoyed a 9-0 run in this game, and maybe even more telling, they are 8-0 in the paint. Well, in that time, a three-pointer goes down, so Holy Cross within four. Meanwhile, in Albuquerque, the matchup between number 11 Wyoming and number 6 Gonzaga, Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner are there in a game tied at 12. Let's listen in. Harris Corner comes in the game along with Richardson, Davis, and Sanhu Amadi, and in the, on the wing, rather, it's Corner, and his shot ricocheting off the front rim out of bounds. Corner, the best three-point shooter percentage-wise for Wyoming. He missed that one, but he comes in your senior for UNC Wilmington. Going for his master's in business. He wants to be a certified public accountant. Now near the midcourt line, Burnett, 20 to shoot. Makes his move to the rim. <laughs> Running one hand, oh. to go. and look at UNC go towards the ball. They touched it last, though. Thank and you. the Seahawks will control it. And Wilmington is going towards the basket. They're dribbling with some intentions, headed towards the basket. The problem is their shots at the very end are kind of like being thrown at the glass rather than shot at the glass. 14 seconds remain on the shot clock. Pump throw from Callahan. Got Clancy to bite again. It is Clancy, and that's number two on Sam Clancy at the 16:36 mark of the first half.
show me a little ball, and the next thing you know, defensively, and obviously the first thing you talk about leaving your feet, the second thing is with the big guys. Why are you jumping out there? Lance, you better watch out. Two personal fouls. Still in a man-to-man -man defense also. On fake hand, on a kick out. Burn out, a jumper. Take three! That should soften up the defense a little bit with Clancy's foul pride. 8-7, Wilmington up top, and the finish by Clancy. And a good delivery, too, by Dupree. It allows them to come up with their full court action. Pressure defense, Blizzard on an outlet across the line. Blizzard, prolific from three-point territory, 39%. The top three-point shooter in the country back in 2000. Inside, untouched. Ed Williams, he lost Clancy. Nice to have the big guys be able to get out on the floor offensively and go 18 feet away. That opens the floor. 10-9, Seahawks, who wants it? <laughs> Both teams do. Craven was able to hold on to it, but the Seahawks got their paws on it, and the possession arrow favors UNC Wilmington. They'll have the basketball when we come back. Early action, first half. These guys will pull up off the dribble on the break in a heartbeat. Now Gord looking for Dickow. Gord again, quick release, got it. Gonzaga Post guys really do a nice job. They handle the ball very well. They're pretty quick in there and they move their feet very effectively. That was just a very nice play by Gord. Four point lead for Gonzaga. Gonzaga, again, trying with their defense to cover up the inside guys for Wyoming. David Rottinghouse in the game for Gonzaga. And Sanhu Amade with the beautiful left-handed layup changed it in midair. And Mark Few thought while he was changing it, he was shuffling those feet, so he was asking for a traveling violation. That was much too easy. Gonzaga playing that zone to prevent those kinds of opportunities. And that's the first Cowboys points in six minutes and 15 seconds. Gonzaga defense starting to become suffocating. Dickow, Rottinghouse on him, Bankhead from the wing, and he rattles it in. Dickow's not the only guy on this Bulldog squad who can shoot the three. Bankhead, a very, very effective three-point shooter, shoots over 40% from out there. That's his 34th three of the season. 19-14, Gonzaga, weak side straight, been hesitant to pull up from the perimeter. He wants to get in deep inside, and Sanhu Amadi stripped and fouled. And that's Gord who picked up the foul. Gord has been very effective inside, and he's trying to set screens in there. Sets the screen for Bankhead, and you're just not able to get around a guy the size of Zach Gord when he's going to set that good screen. 6'8", 250 pounds, although he's got some foul problems now. Picked up his second foul at the 7.57 mark. And that will send Uche and Sanwu Amadi to the line. Here comes a couple of subs as Roni Turioff, a freshman from Martinique, comes in the game. Sanwu Amadi with one more coming. Second team all Mountain West. Very effective, very strong inside. Player. Second one short. A but whistle, somebody in the lane prematurely. And this goes against Gonzaga. Bankhead stepped in a little too quickly. You are allowed to leave your spot on the lane when the shooter releases the ball. The shooter can't leave until the ball hits the rim. Second free throw, in and out, loose ball, rebounded by Davis, his fifth. He has been crashing the boards tonight. Inside, Richardson, the runner, and he gets the kind bounce. And that's something that Wyoming needs to do a little bit more. They have been content to pass that ball around the perimeter of the Gonzaga zone. They've got to get it inside with the pass or with the dribble. Step. Turioff. Bankhead sets his feet again and rips it. Bankhead back-to-back -back threes. Gonzaga takes a 22-16 lead. And the freshman's gonna have to get out there on him. Inside, tapped around, step. Here comes Step. Step to the bucket, off the glass and in. Nicely done. Anthony Reason giving it up. 
the unselfish play of the Zags, and they have their largest lead of the game. 7.07 to go, first half of play, 24-16. Kansas, and it's tough for teams that see them all the time to get used to it. Nice pass inside to Zach Coe, and he draws the foul on Simeon. Well, you can see this Ralph Wilder has, has this team well coached. Moving the ball well, making intelligent decisions. Uh, and a good idea to find Tim Zetko. He is their best player. Can go outside, also inside as well. Kansas having problems catching up to the, to the ball movement of Holy Cross. Zetko, uh, just a junior, his dad played four years of football at Notre Dame, was on the 74 national champions. Averaging on under 14 a game. He has a four tonight and holy cross by three. That's a lot of hair. <laughs> and we've got a lot go on in this game. A lot of assists and a lot of points from Matt Carroll of Notre Dame. Leading all scorers with 11 for the Irish. Good pace for both ball clubs, Kevin. Up and down the floor, finding their open shooters. Not allowing either team to get set defensively. Both well coached, change up defenses. The boxing one has been successful for Charlotte to slow down Matt Carroll just a little bit. Joby Thomas back in now for Charlotte. After we got two quick fouls within seconds of each other. As the net. Steps inside to Nash. A little backdoor cut. Good ball fake by Basden. Charlotte's got their biggest lead. Thomas faking three. Graves popping a three. Rebound by the freshman Cornette. Lost it inside. And here comes Basden to Thomas. To Nash on top. Stevens the defense passed in the rebound Baskin the freshman has made his presence felt early off the bench 7 nothing run now for the 49ers Graves collides inside with Jermaine Williams and five. going to fake out in the back door cut no weak side help anywhere Ryan Humphrey got caught staring at his man up top executed perfectly Greg Gumbel in New York right now Charlotte and Notre Dame it's a five point lead for the 49ers look at what's happening in the Midwest the top seed Kansas Jayhawks trail Holy Cross by three let's join Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas behind by seven early Holy Cross on a nice little 14 4 run well Dick it was a couple of turnovers early by Holy Cross gave up some easy things but now they kind of have gauged it almost like gauging an old Nola Ryan fastball getting back on defense has been the key though for Holy Cross to have this three point lead. Collison finally to Miles an interesting lineup out there for Roy Williams good and his all America not in there stepping out of bounds was there in Miles. Here in St. Louis, Roy Williams, number one seeded Kansas Jayhawks, with, with a you know a little challenge from the 16th seed Holy Cross, who have said we're ready to play as we were last year against Kansas after falling behind 11 to four. Canada, Holy Cross now leads by three with the ball. Dick Kendrick with Matt Gukas here at the Edward Jones Dome. Kansas came out like a house of fire, went on a 9-0 run. A couple of timeouts by Ralph Wooler settled things down, and all of a sudden, Holy Cross looks like a confident basketball team right now. They know they have a very formidable opponent, however. Roy Williams has brought back in his two All-Stars, Heinrich and Gooden. Oh. Rebound, uh, and uh, unable to put it back is Patrick Werty. But he draws the foul. Collison's first. So Holy Cross continues to attack the number one seed Kansas Jayhawks in the Midwest. Let's send you back to Greenville, South Carolina, where Charlotte's lead over Notre Dame is five at 28-23, which rejoin Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold. Charlotte is 
has equaled their biggest lead tonight of five, reaching in. Curtis Nash. And a foul. Been on Stevens. I think it was on Stevens. Ryan Humphrey wanting the ball down low. Frustrated a little bit so far in his first half. Only two of eight from the field. Stevens picks up his first. Thomas for three. Mistake defensively. Good recognition by Thomas. He got the ball in quickly. Defense was just getting set, not paying attention to the guy taking the ball inbound. Chris Thomas has hit two threes for the Irish. Gaston drives. Nash for three. Stevens probably balls it to himself and saves it for Charlotte. Thomas a three. Stevens in there again. Butter Johnson with the whistle. Kane Stevens keeping that ball alive. They put a, better put a body on him, keep him off the boards. Stevens from all angles. Matt Carroll, Notre Dame, picks up his second foul. The first one, the hang time, the ability to stay up in the air. Next one, it's up. Kept it alive. Bob Brown checks in, and Basden will take a seat. Good minutes by Basden. Torian Jones back in for Notre Dame. Irish have hit five threes, four for Charlotte. Another three here. Stevens with the miss. Jones with the Notre Dame rebound. Humphrey double teamed inside. Tried to spin out of it, a foul. And they, John, have made no secret as to what they'd like to do. Butter Johnson picks up the foul. It's the first on him for Charlotte. Now, Ryan Humphrey, a 58% free throw shooter. He's going to sprint down the floor, establish low post position, and try to camp out, move when he has to. Chris Thomas will find it. Humphrey gets it close to the goal. You can bet that uh, Charlotte will pack away. Here's a third team all Big 12 performer in Oklahoma and then decided to transfer after his sophomore year. Yes, yeah, surprise to the uh, coaching staff and fans at Oklahoma. Young man who grew up in Tulsa with the Booker T High School. Booker T Washington High School in uh, Tulsa there. Humphrey. We're tied again at 28. South region in Greenville. Tremendous improvement this year over last year. Numbers are up by nine points and five rebounds a game. And he's established himself as a star in the West Coast Conference. So Violet takes a seat. And Turiov comes back into the game. Zach, stay in that 2-3 zone. How do you beat this zone if you're Wyoming? You got to get the ball inside. Either you penetrate with the dribble or you penetrate with the pass, but you cannot afford to just keep the ball out on the perimeter. You got to be careful going into corners because Gonzaga will trap you. So you got to go north and south. Davis down the lane, and he travels. That was good ball movement. You go from one side of the zone to the other, and then after you have made that zone shift a couple of times, you'll generally get an opening in the middle, and Davis caught the ball but forgot to dribble it on his way to the lane. Game trends, we've had five ties, six lead changes. Biggest lead, eight points for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Step being pressured by Straight, raking at the ball. Straight and Richardson have really done a fine job on against Step and Dickow. Jay Sherrill finds Turi off Dickow. I tell you what, these guys are shadowing Dickow. Down the lane with the step poked away from behind, and that's a foul. Dante Richardson thought he had it. His second foul with 3.47 to go. That is a play that the officials will very rarely give a defender coming from behind and slapping the ball away on that part of the basketball court. Dick out beat you. The shot clock is running down. Don't reach from behind and pick up the foul. So Dan Dickow, what a player from Vancouver, Washington. And he misses the free throw. A rare miss for Dickow, and now he's starting to get a little frustrated straight the other way. Bailey, short, Turioff clearing the rebound. Now step. Very solid player. Cut off, though, by straight. 
Dickow fouled on the baseline. And Dan Dickow, he must have known that when he came into this tournament that he would be having four or five different shadows per game. And he's had three so far in this game. He just does a great job moving without the ball. Gets bounced. That's corner trying to guard him now. Gets the first one to go and a look at the senior season highs. He had 39 versus Portland, 34 versus Loyola Marymount. Three other games with 29 points. And as we mentioned, one of those 29 point games was in the tournament championship against Pepperdine, where he only had two in the first half. And he's become a legend in Spokane. However, he missed his second free throw. One of three from the line. In the corner, this is pure. Harris corner, ripping one. And Wyoming takes a one point lead. And the three point shooting. 2 of 5 for the Pokes. Step, the kick, Turioff wide open. Short, rebounded with one hand by Davis. And he owns the glass this evening in the first half, his sixth rebound. And Zanwu Amadi misses in close. Hernandez with the rebound. Wyoming doing a good job getting back on defense. Dick out the other way. Lost it on the way up. Loose ball, Hernandez butchered from behind. And Hernandez has been very, very active since his entry into the game. Gonzaga, again, that was a very tough shot by Dickow. Dickow, the shot selection by the Zags, a bit questionable here in the first half. So Alex Hernandez, senior from Vegas, averaging six points per game. Gets the first one to go, a 67% free throw shooter on the season. He has six rebounds in the first half of play. And that's off the bench. Off the bench. And two points. So here we are, 2.34 to go, 29-28, Gonzaga. North Carolina Wilmington with a one-point lead. O'Neal swings it. Farmer open lead. Can't get it to go for three. Rebound fought for. It. And claimed by Terry. Clancy touched it last. Out of bounds. A timeout. It's the Seahawks leading by one. We're wondering why in the world do they call Butter? He originally was named Butterfingers. And when his game began to smooth out, it was shortened to Butter. <laughs> Butterfingers is a kid. That's yes. As he got older, became a pretty good player. I'm sure he told his friends that Butterfinger uh, no longer exists. No, just Butter. Yeah. Four to play in the first half. Got a smooth stroke, knocked in his first three when he walked in the ball game tonight. Full court pressure now by the 49ers. No call made there. Here comes Humphrey to Carroll to Humphrey, slides in for two. Humphrey's the ability to use his body when he went up to let in. Steven Sonny had a chance for a block. Notre Dame shooting 41%, Charlotte shooting 40% tonight. But the six threes by Notre Dame have been key. Stevens, who has made things happen on both ends of the floor. Joby Thomas picked up by Carroll. To make a Thomas work for shots. He's kind of barking out his teammates. He needs some screens. Butter Johnson galloping down the lane with the flyer. Butter Johnson has put in six. Averages eight a ballgame. So well ahead of his pace. He's got the look of a confident offensive player, though, looking to score. Cornette with the screen for Graves. Back to Cornette. Another three. Rebound by Graves. Rebound by Cam Stevens of Charlotte with 113 to play in the first half. We talked, we mentioned Joe B. Thomas being sick. Where that affects you is going after loose balls, blocking out guys, moving without the basketball. Charlotte is led by five. Notre Dame is led by as many as four. Nash inside lost it. Butter Johnson uncovered. Butter. And he gives Charlotte a tie at 35. And a timeout. 
Hunter Johnson now has cut an eight. He does so many other things, and in many cases, he is a so-called small forward, if you will. That's the matchup that he gets, and he doesn't lose an inch. He'll battle you every bit. Holy Cross and Purple, the, the 16th seed, giving Kansas only one, a 26-22 game as Heinrich gets one out of two free throws for the Jayhawks. Kansas with a couple of runs. Another tie, nine, Charlotte, eight, Notre Dame. Check out the game centers for in-depth play-by-play of each tournament game at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. Thomas to Graves. Carroll out there with Humphrey and Swanigan. Nasdaq is back out there for Charlotte. Nash is there over Stevens. The shot by Carroll drops. Oh, wait a minute. Interference. Wipe it away. Will not count. I didn't think he touched it, but obviously he did. Ryan Humphrey has the uh, look of a five-year-old that gets caught doing something wrong after this play. That ball is going to go in. Touched it anyway. game is uh, gone just about the way we thought it would. Yeah, both coaches said yesterday in practice that when they turn on the game film and watch their opponent, it's like they're watching themselves play. The final, final, final shot. Yeah, final shot. And Butter Johnson has that look tonight. Kevin? Eight points, including a three. The look some players get NCAA tournament starts. Lamont Brown got a screen. Now he's trapped. You see the clock. A good good ball fake play. by Joby Thomas, which takes us to halftime, tied at 35. The first half, which included six ties, six lead changes. And John, no lead bigger than five. And let's hit it up. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Charlotte 35, Notre Dame 35. Not a great gumble. And Clark Kellogg. All right, Kevin, can't get any closer than that. It's very indicative of what's going on around the country in this tournament this evening. In Albuquerque, Gonzaga by one over Wyoming. Gus Johnson, Dan Bonner. They've gone back and forth. Here at the pit, Gonzaga and Wyoming. Josh Davis's free throw ties this game up at 32 with under 30 seconds to play. And it has been a first half where Gonzaga has not shot the ball well. Their shot selection a bit questionable at times. And some solid defense by Wyoming. Dan Dickow in particular has struggled with his offensive game. Shot clock turned off. 20 seconds to go on the game clock. Hernandez, six rebounds in the first half, sends Dickow away. Seven times this season, Dickow has made a basket to end the first half with eight seconds or fewer left. Now Dickow inside, Hernandez is fouled. What a pass by Dickow. Hernandez was a bit surprised and couldn't handle it, but a nice job by Hernandez to come up with the ball. Expect Dick out to shoot the ball. That was left-handed, and Hernandez was so surprised. Almost lost it. So Dan Dickow on the season averages 20 points per game. Trying to get his teammates involved as Hernandez hits the first. Saga with a one-point lead. Two seconds to go. They're trying to set their defense as Hernandez prepares to shoot the second free throw. You don't want to let Wyoming throw the ball the length of the court in this situation. Make him use time. And Mingle steps oh off his baseline. Boy, Steve McLean's troops have done such a nice job throughout the first half. Now Gonzaga with the opportunity to score one. At the buzzer. Now, they're trying to get Dickow back in the game, but no time went off the clock since Dickow went out, so he cannot come back in. Here's Bankhead looking, looking. Inside. Pull up jumper is good for Jay Sherrill at the buzzer, and Gonzaga will take it. At the end of one half, the Zags lead it 36 to 32. You can't get 
Dan Dick out back in the game, so why not throw the ball to a guy who averages one point per game on the season? It's Jay Sherrill, and he knocks it down. So Sherrill on the baseline gets it to fall. Now let's go. Seven lead changes, three ties in that first half of play, and that's the end of the first half, 36-32. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local state. Front, free throws from Farmer, and USC able to retreat defensively. Lou Chapman back on the floor for the Seahawks. They lead by three. Terrible. And I'm sure he let his team hear about a lot of different things. He's he's gearing up right now for halftime. Lufkin averaging seven points a game. He misses both free throws. Langford sets up the freshman, and he is blocked. Simeon unable to get the shot off, but gets the ball back. Fires again. Short. Lufkin rebounds and Simeon fouls him. And that will be, I believe, the 10th team foul on Kansas in the double bonus. Second foul on Simeon. A little bit of a defensive clinic there by a freshman, Nate Lufkin, out of Austin, Texas, playing big man defense just like you would uh, put it on the board and, and drill it in practice, standing two hands straight up in the air, not committing the foul, challenging the shot, and consequently gets rewarded at the other end of the floor. Double bonus for Lufkin, who missed his last two. Well, they cross seven for 11, as you can see, and Lufkin down the bottom of the well with that toss. 29-26, as Simeon and Gooden go out. We see for the first time Jeff Carey usually gets a couple of minutes in each half. Collison, Heinrich, Langford stay aboard. Boy, Nick Collison, you have not said that word or that name very often tonight, Dick. He has to find a way to get involved in this basketball game. He's got to start moving and flashing to open air. Two games at halftime. The other two in action are tight as well. And Clark Kellogg and I will bring you all the action right now. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios here in New York and to Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. Halftime of our games in Greenville and Albuquerque. First of all, in the South at Greenville, Charlotte and Notre Dame are tied at 35 apiece, and the 49ers hanging tough with the, with the Irish. Cam Stevens is close to a double-double guy on the season. He's got eight points already on 50% shooting, and Matt Carroll doing what he does so well. Barry to three. He's made three or four in the first half. Notre Dame has shot six out of 12 from behind the three-point line. First round action in the West at halftime. Gonzaga leading Wyoming by a score of 36-32 in a game that would have been tighter had the Cowboys not messed things up at the end four of the half. Four points for Gonzaga in the last two seconds to get that lead. Dick out struggling with his shot so far, but still nine points. Six ties and eight lead changes in this game so far. Meanwhile, in St. Louis, first round action in the Midwest. Kansas leads Holy Cross by two. Let's take you there, Dick Enberg, Matt Gukas. Holy Cross here in St. Louis, the 16th seed within two of the top seed, Kansas Jayhawks, and the Crusaders with the ball and a chance for a tie, take the lead with a tray. Kansas just unable to shake this pesky Holy Cross team. Shorter, not as quick, not the firepower for Coach Ralph Willard, but his team tenacious. And Collison just draws his second foul, and that sends Holy Cross to the line and a chance to tie. There you see it, the uh, field goal percentage. It was higher than that before for Kansas. They're starting to cool off quite a bit. And what a smart play that time by Ryan Saravalli. The big man stepped out. Jeff Carey, he just banged into him with uh, Kansas in the penalty to get a couple of uh, freebies. Wardy returns to the lineup for Holy Cross along uh, with uh, Guillermo Sanchez as both free throws connect for Ryan Sarah. Look at him. He's fired. It's tied. 31. 
31-31 tie, Holy Cross and Kansas. One other game underway right now at Arco Arena in Sacramento. USC's Trojans trailing UNC Wilmington by a score of 30 to 28. Let's take you there. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarco. UNCW with a two-point lead coming up Wednesday night. A new survivor. Don't miss the first 10 minutes when the castaways' lives will be turned upside down. Then stay tuned. An incredible adventure on the amazing race. It all begins at 8, 7 Central, Wednesday, right here on CBS. Uh, and you know, the Seahawks have not out-rebounded when you look at team statistics for the season. On average, they don't out-rebound their opponent. Right now, they're up 16 to 13, so clearly they are doing a terrific job considering their personnel from the rebounding standpoint. Joel Justice back on the floor for the Seahawks. Blizzard will go cross-court. Justice. Shot clock at 15. Get it down low. Cools turn it. Swatted out of there by Clancy and tracked down by Derek Craven. Craven's been getting those backup minutes at point guard ahead of Robert Hutchinson. Here's Granville out on the perimeter. Craven to Granville. Three pointer, no. Knocked it up off the glass, but controlled by Blizzard. So the Seahawks continue to lead USC by two, coming up on two minutes to play in the first half. Thanks for joining us here on Singular at the Half. Send you back to Charlotte and Notre Dame right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. And welcome back to St. Louis with a score tied at 31 and just over two minutes remaining to Kenberg with Matt Kukas. And this is what is so attractive about March Madness. You get the number one seed in Kansas, a Holy Cross team. He said, how are they going to possibly stay with the Jayhawks? Here they are. Dick, if anybody told me or anybody that Holy Cross would be shooting 32 percent in this first half and be tied at 31 with Kansas and be the more aggressive team basically throughout this whole first half. Roy Williams battling on the bench to fire up his crew as they come across the timeline. Freshman Aaron Miles with the ball. Watch out, watch out. Crusaders uh, defending it very well. Collison almost intercepted by Sarah Valley. Heinrich open can't hit the 15 footer, gets his own rebound. Loose ball, and it's collected by. Guillermo Sanchez. And it's the aggressive defense of Holy Cross forcing that turnover. They went to a little matchup zone, something a little bit different. They've shown it a couple of times in this first half. And open underneath is number 45, Patrick Wertie, and the junior from Poughkeepsie, averaging nine a game, has six, and Holy Cross is in the lead. So just about a minute and a half to play there and Holy Cross with a two point lead on the top seed in the Midwest at 33 31 in Sacramento UNC Wilmington Seahawks 37 28 over USC. Let's join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Oh. Ed Williams on that drive to the rim. 43.4 seconds to go until the intermission and North Carolina Wilmington leading USC 37 to 28. Jimmy, they came out and looked like a confident team despite being a 13 seed right from the outset.